Well, I guess you guys saw the game, so very proud of the way the girls played in the fourth quarter. I think we held them scoreless. Um, it's very impressive for the way that things were rolling up to the third quarter. Um, very impressed with the way the girls composed themselves. Um, Kylie White was injured uh, and came out of the game. And I thought Courtney Buckrath came in and gave us a nice quick rotation and scored for us. Um, and then Kylie was able to get back in the game and, and especially in the fourth quarter, just putting her head down and getting to the basket and neutralizing some of their strengths and keeping us on the scoreboard. But more importantly, taking some pressure off of the rest of us so that we could just settle down and play some defense. Uh, once again, though, I, I just think it was a total team effort. I thought the girls played excellent defense down the stretch. Um, I think maybe, uh, you know, for a little while there, maybe things got away from us. We kind of broke from our patterns, broke from the scouting report a little bit. But part of that's the jitters of a big game. And obviously, when we were able to attack, they got a 6-2 girl in there that was able to alter a lot of shots and do a lot of other things. And I think that stymied us for a little while. But just very impressed uh, with the team effort. How were you able to take her out of the game in the fourth quarter? <laughs> well, you noticed she wasn't out very long. Um, but, you know, we, I, you, know you look at the, at the minutes that the girls played and another Ironman effort uh, for, the, for the girls that started. But, um, you know, we needed her in, and she knew, you know, Kylie knew she needed to play. I mean, how, how were you able to take uh, oh, the, 14 the, out of the game? Uh, well, <laughs> right here's the person. Uh, Katie was Gardner, so. <laughs> Well, let, she can answer that one. Any thoughts on that, what you were trying to do to her, Katie? Um, well, I knew she couldn't penetrate and get to the basket. I knew I had to stop her. And um, once I t really took that charge, I think that made her be a little more self-conscious of what she was doing. And then uh, um, I don't know, necessarily want to say she got scared, but she didn't really look to see the basket as often anymore. Katie, you seemed to frustrate her a lot. She was really uh, clearly frazzled by you know, your defense against her. Talk about that a little bit. Um, well, um, coach really emphasizes defense, and so then um, our offense flows from our defense. And so when uh, all of us, all five of us on the floor, play solid defense as a team, that's when we do our best. Coach, to see your leading scorer also lock down arguably the best player on the other team, to see Katie do it from both ends, what was that like on the bench knowing that she was just getting it done? Uh, I was very thankful <laughs> <laughs> that she was getting it done. Um, you know, we, we've come to expect that a little bit. I thought we did a better job in the, in the fourth quarter of rotating and giving her help when she got, you know, we, Katie did a good job of, of keeping her um, hesitant at the free throw line so she couldn't get her head down. Uh, Kylie was a little banged up, and I think she was getting by Kylie at her hip. I thought Katie did a good job of slowing her up, and the rest of the girls kind of got, you know, a little more pressure to her, kind of clogged the lane so that it wasn't free. But obviously it's, it was nice to see, and, you know, if she's going to Purdue, then – Maybe some people should be watching. <laughs> was there a schematic change in that second half, or was it just pretty Yeah, much I told him to start playing defense. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty much just hustle for that second half? Well, I think it was hard. You know, we talked about it in the Rodgers game, but and I, I don't think we gave our best effort. Um, you know, I think, what, 26 points in the first half, and there's been some games where we've limited teams to 24, 26 points total. Um, you know, we didn't want to get in a game where we were exchanging buckets with them. We surely didn't want their three-point shooters to get started. Unfortunately, they did. Um, I thought the uh, Carmen girl got really comfortable just setting and, and chucking, and that was something we had tried to avoid. So it was just a re-emphasis of kind of the scouting report, what we wanted to do, and, and the fact that we only had eight more minutes to do it. And I thought the girls responded very well. Aaron, as a freshman, four or four from the line, really clutch. Talk about what's going through your head at the line. Um, we started off really good on our free throws at the beginning of the season, and then we kind of lost our groove a little bit. But at practice, we continued to work on them. So I think taking the time each practice to really focus on my shot and everything really helped. And I knew my teammates needed me to put them in, so that helped too. I talked with you about that before you guys left uh, the other day about the, the gym. And uh, it was it like you had mentioned that you just get out there and just everything everything else goes away and you see the game? Yeah. I mean, I try to focus on the game as much as I can. And sometimes you hear the fans, but you just got to walk them out. Danny, it seems like in the second half, you guys really were able to also find that comfort level. And you were the one running the offense. Talk about what it was like to find that groove, especially in the middle of the third quarter when you guys were out take the lead back. Well, we try to get everyone to touch the ball, and that helps a lot. Um, with our offense to flow. So once everyone started getting a touch on the ball, it really helped. So. Were you 
I mean, not that you were surprised at how well you executed your defense, but uh, talk about what that was like to see the, the defense once again step up late in the game. Well, we kind of got our groove back, I guess, in the fourth quarter. Mr. Yant kind of talked to us, and we really want to win this year, so it kind of gave us a boost for the fourth quarter to step our d defense up. Katie, maybe Danny can touch on this as well. The GGT shirts and wristbands you guys have been wearing, what's the story behind those? Um, well, actually, Danny brought it up. Uh, one day I saw her with the wrist, we all saw her with the wristband on, and it says, God's got this, and we really centered our um, season off of, like, really trusting him and him being in the center of all of our priorities in life and in basketball, and once he's the center of everything, then everything falls into place. We always say, if, you, if we win, we'll praise him. If we lose, we'll praise him, so. You started right out in the fourth quarter with a layup and a drive got a seven-footer. Uh, tell me about what your mentality was going into the fourth quarter about just taking the ball to the basket no matter who was there. Um, really in the third quarter I was getting tired and I was settling and Mr. Yant told us just to attack the fourth <laughs> quarter. He kept yelling at us and I really took that one to the heart because uh, I can't really, if you shoot and you miss you're almost, we didn't have any big rebounders in because Kylie was a little banged up and we had to rotate back because we were afraid they were going to run on us. So we didn't really have big rebounders inside if I shot. So then I knew that I had to attack and really get to the basket, and then I had to finish. Danny, you were really attacking early on in the game, uh, attacking the lane, kind of continuation of that last play against Rodgers. Just kind of talk about your mentality to start the game. You were able to get a couple assists, uh, get a couple baskets in the lane. It kind of worked in the beginning, but towards the end, I, I kind of shouldn't have done it, obviously. but. That's all right. I mean, we got back in our groove with everyone touching the ball again, and that was awesome. So, Coach, just I know we talked about this last week up in Ontario, but to go from D3 to D2 and to be on the stage and to execute this squad to be back in the state finals, talk about what that was like to, you know, to see your girls answer the adversity and, and get back to that level again. Well, you know, it, they're going to play hard no matter who you put on the floor. I, I don't think it's D2, D4. You know, we played. Ottaville in D4, we played Grove in D3. I, you know, I, I don't. Once the game ball goes up, I don't think they're gonna look at the team and say, "Well, they're D1, they're D2." You know, we we beat all of our D1 opponents this year, so um, I, I don't. You know, it's great that we're here, but again, it, it's just a basketball game, and, and you know, we got to play the five players they put on the floor. And I give our girls credit; they're gonna match up with whoever's out there. You know, whether they're even up or whether we're losing four inches, and. They're going to give 100% effort, and it's going to take a lot of talent and a lot of heart to beat us. Well, what was the injury that Kylie had? I mean, you put her back in, she couldn't have been too hurt, but what, what exactly happened to her? Well, I, you wrote the story about all the injuries she had, so you know <laughs> it's really hard to keep Kylie out of the game. I don't know what Kylie's injury is because she's been pretty tight-lipped about what actually, actually is hurting. Um, you know, she was a little gimpy and a little bit limping, um, I'm hoping it's nothing, but to be honest, I, I haven't talked to the trainer yet. We came straight to the straight to the interviews. Um, I hope it's nothing. I hope it's something, just a bruise, a little ice. Um, she's played with a lot of injuries this year. Uh, it might just be the cumulative effect of a pounding that she's taken this season. Danny, the boys won. I'm just curious to how much you guys were following them while you're waiting for your game to begin. Yeah, Kylie uh, was following the game and giving us the updates. So we on the bus ride here, we were all getting into that game too. So we were excited for both of us. We wanted both of us to win and get our school all hyped up and stuff. So. What does it say about your fan base that so many of those fans chose to come to Columbus today as opposed to a shorter trip to Bowling Green to see the boys play? I mean, I guess state is a little bigger deal than regional semis. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a little. <laughs> Maybe just a little, but I mean, it's a hard decision. We're both, I guess I've heard that we're both really fun to watch, so. Can we quote you on that? <laughs> 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 your thoughts on Alter for this Saturday? Well, to be honest, um, you know, the last two opponents with Rodgers and then obviously coming up with Hathaway Brown, a very storied franchise, we haven't really looked ahead. We got a couple of tapes. Obviously, you know, they won, uh, I think they were undefeated last year, state champs, and uh, they got some nice talent back. Um, as soon as we get out of here, we'll start looking at them, but, you know, uh, I don't think that, you know, our girls are going to shy away. I just think we're going to come out and play and, and do the best we can, and, you know, they've been here. They know what it's all about, um, and obviously they, they had a nice game, which we unfortunately were stuck in traffic, so then we, get, we didn't get to see too much of it. But, uh, you know, I We'll get in and we'll, we'll look at tape tonight and we'll put a scouting report together tomorrow and, and hopefully the girls can compete. What is it like to know that their last two wins are against you know, premier 
premier programs. Obviously, you guys are putting yourselves in that premier category, but you know, to beat a Rodgers and to beat a Hathaway Brown tonight by double digits, I mean, obviously, it's it, it, the scoreboard's even at that point, right? Well, Fanny's been with me here since I got this job. This is the four years for all for both of us. Um, I think it's now 108 games that she's played in at the OHSAA level. Started every game since she was a freshman. When she came in, we talked about, you know, we wanted to get this program to the top. We wanted to hang back banners in the gym. And everybody kind of looked at us like, you're coming off an eight-win season. Um, we worked our butts off. You know, we, early on, we went out and we scrimmaged everybody we could. We wanted, we wanted to scrimmage at anybody. We went to shootouts and we would ask to play the best teams there and they'd say, well, we don't want to play you, we're going to play this group or this group. Um, so we knew we had some work to do. Um, I would think that those teams would not want to scrimmage us at least. Coach, there's a lot of momentum swings throughout the games. Teams entering five, six points hurts. How do you kind of characterize being able to swing the momentum back and have it swung around and just being able to just answer those spurts in the games? Well, you know, we uh, in the last couple of games, we've held the lead for most of the time, and those spurts always came on the back end, and we were able to push it out. This time, obviously, we lost the lead and kind of had to fight back. Um, I, I guess it's a step for the girls to be able to know that we can do that against a quality opponent. Um, from a coaching perspective, that's what you hope for, that in a crunch time game, the girls don't wilt. They didn't. Uh, we relied on what we do best. We. Like Danny said, we got everybody involved. We attacked them instead of let them attack us. And we played great defense during that stretch. Um, you know, it, if I was going to call a timeout, that's what I would have said. So it was nice that some of my assistant coaches were saying, let's get a timeout here, let's get a timeout here. But part of the time, you got to see can the girls respond. You know, we, um, or at least I want to see can the girls respond. Um, and they did. Uh, they needed a little bit of codgling there going into the fourth quarter, but fortunately they responded. Well, our momentum obviously wasn't with us in the beginning, but we all got together and once we get together on the court, we all have the same page and we're just like, we need to get this. I mean, we came here, we worked hard all this season and we're going to win this game. So. I, I think this might be a little more exciting. I mean, this gym is huge and it's awesome. I mean, this is an awesome experience. Uh, Danny, how does it know that your final high school game is going to end with a chance at a state title? It's, an, it's amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable. As a freshman, I really didn't think that we would do this, but. She have faith in me. I, well, I, I mean, I guess I really didn't imagine it, but we worked so hard for the past four years. And I mean, all of us have chemistry now, and it's just awesome that we get to play in the state semifinal again two years in a row, so. Okay, we all in good shape here. All right, thank you. Thank you.